done is, is uh, no less, I think, than throwing a bomb into the whole music business. Don't you think, think so? Yeah. I wish yeah. we would have thrown a bomb in the music business and they all would have been at least dismembered. But I don't know, it was more like a firecracker, ladyfinger. <laughs> yeah. Pop, you know, that's about it. I mean, a small snap of the finger. We just kind of came into this thing with really high ideals, but now it seems like a lot of the garbage is proliferating, and so we're got more of a jaded what we're doing is nothing new it's just that our you band know, happened to m penetrate into the mainstream yeah so mainstream kids now are are realizing the fact that they can start bands yeah i think that's very good it's very nice and flattering that we've we, we helped aid something like that but um i don't know that ideal has always been around in, in to me it seems kind of um too it seems really sad that so many people have a hard time finding small record shops or underground or independent type of music where in every city there's at least two or three of those kind of shops. Mm. And it doesn't seem to me to be that hard of a thing to find, you know? Mm. But some people are so, I don't know, narrow-minded or just unaware to where they need to be, they need something like someone as accessible as us to be thrown into their faces to where they uh, realize that there are small record shops and independent labels of people doing things on their own. So uh, maybe that's the most important thing then with, with the whole Nirvana thing as it is called, that uh, you actually give people the chance to find other, other bands, you know, finding those record shops and stuff. Well, yeah, just um, in like interviews, just naming names of bands so maybe somebody could be watching so i never heard of that band maybe i'll go check them out yeah like bringing a teenage fan club on tour with you now exactly yeah exactly yeah. Mm. you've been on tour with like shonen and i it's, it's as simple as this go to your telephone directory look into the pages where it says record shops call up all the record shops and ask do you sell independent music do you sell independent records and then find the address if they say yes go to the shop find fanzines and there are all kinds of little distribution i mean there, there are distributions of little fanzines and, and magazines that are homemade by kids who are fans why which is why they're called fanzines mm. and then they can find out about all this kind of music it's really simple Th they really shouldn't need bands like us to tell them i have a feeling with the next record we're gonna lose a lot of our audience <laughs> I know that you've been, I mean, the, the amount of touring and gigs that you've done now, I suppose, have, have, you know, been more than anything that you could ever have anticipated, like, two years ago. Actually, we've scaled our um, touring back. It's not the amount of touring, it's just the, the, the scale of the shows that we're playing. I mean, we're playing everything on such a grand scale. It's it's something that we've never done before, especially like five festivals in a row. I mean, we've done the Reading Festival before, but it just gets pretty insane after a while. Do you guys like it? I don't think I really like it that much. I don't really mind either. it. I don't mind it. I like. I, like I, I kind of enjoy playing outside, but it's just it's about as un. I definitely don't want to do this ever again. And if we do, I'd only like to do maybe a couple of outdoor festivals. You know. I don't want to do like a whole bunch in a row. It's just it's just so impersonal and. Well, if it's not outdoors, it's indoor giant. Yeah, I, indoor. I don't know. I, I just I just see an attitude with new bands like uh, in the last. Well, like here's a band like three extreme. or four years. Uh, here's, yeah, a, yeah, here's a band like Extreme, some total schlock rock band, right? And we played with them at some festival. I don't know why, but um, they are in an alternate reality than ours. They are in that rock and roll rock reality. They and it's just and it's a different reality. It. It's, they surround themselves with these professional dickhead commercial rock and roll guys who like when they show up at an airport their their manager runs in ahead of them and, and tells the people who are greeting them no at video. their label no video no video we want we want to pass straight to the to the van here's what we need we want to pass straight to the van we don't want any pictures taken you know it's like so what <laughs> and i'm not even really sure if they're aware of that things can actually operate on a different level. You know? I don't think they're aware of how much they suck. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but that's it's not the type bad. of bands that I was talking about. No, <laughs> no, you said the new bands yeah. have integrity. Yeah. It wasn't always like that because in the past there was dinosaur rock, Zeppelin, you know, limousines and, and caviar and cocaine. Yeah, and, and the kids who were starting new bands were, were you know, blinded by that in a way. And so they, they fell sure. for, the, for the traps, and I don't think they do that anymore. No, because it, it's just so, it's ridiculous if you think about it. I think even the people who participated in that, who they're all in their 50s now, they look back at all the excess of the 70s, and mm. it was just gross. I think they probably even shudder when they think of it. It's just, I just couldn't see, see myself doing anything like that. Mm. It's not realistic. You get a lot of attention, you know what I mean? A lot of, like, Teen Spirit was kind of played into the ground, kind of made me feel a little self-conscious, you know? Um, what do you guys think of Hysteria? Oh, it's a load of shit. I think, I think there are at least 10 to 15 other bands who are just as good, if, if not better, than us. And they deserve just as much attention as we do, if they choose to take that attention, if they want it, you know. But um, I think the reason that we've become so popular is because we were on a major label and we were exposed. We had we had the tools and, and the access. To In mid ages, there've been loads of really, really, really good bands like Sonic Youth, and better bands, and Battle Surfers, and yeah. Pixies, and all of these guys. And and there's always been really good, substantial stuff underneath the surface ever, ever since. I've 60s, you know, yeah. and just for some reason, I don't know if it was some conspiracy, or, or it might be just that labels invest money in some crap, and they just want their money back, and so they just shove this down the throats of the mainstream, mm. or they've, like, read some demographic survey, says that, you know, people want more disco, or whatever, and they <laughs> say, give more disco, and then people are given disco, or whatever, and then they say in the survey that they want disco. It's like it's just like a vicious circle. So. It's the same thing with the hippies. It's like the hippies started out in San Francisco with a small group of people, and by 1967, the people who started the hippie movement denounced the hippie movement by the time before it became commercialized. Because I, I, I and I feel the same way with underground music. Once it gets commercialized, it it really doesn't matter because they're by the time that all the hippies it's not underground anymore, that's for sure yeah but by the time the hippies the hippie movement was so huge and, and the mainstream was aware of it the fringe people you know the people in the suburbs who weren't aware of the hippie movement at the beginning finally turned into hippies but they were fake hippies you know what i mean they weren't really hippies they were just growing their hair long and smoking pot every once in a while and talking about peace and love but they really didn't understand it and that's what's happening with the um supposedly alternative underground music scene right now and, and it happened in the early 80s with new wave you know it's just a cycle and that's inevitable isn't it oh sure yeah, yeah. but I, I don't know i just I, I i may sound really negative about it but i i sincerely think that the generation underneath my our generation the kids who are around like 15 or even 9 to 12 to to 20 years old are a bit more aware and a bit more intelligent i, th I think education is a little bit better right now and the reason that kids are more educated is because they they choose to be more educated mm -hmm. I, I don't know why that is i can't explain it but i just feel like kids right now in their in their teenage years are a lot more aware of things and, and they're and they're a bit more passionate about things they're not as cynical as we were when we everybody's trying to sign you know the next nirvana <laughs> which it's, it's become sort of a ghost in the record industry who will find the next nirvana well the same thing happened in the punk movement when it when it happened in, in the late 70s it's like major record labels are signing punk bands by just shortly after like most punk bands first gigs you know a punk band would start play their first gig you know and they'd be signed to a major label right away you know just because it's a trend right now mm. and that just proves that there are a lot of old school dinosaurs in the record industry still who need to be weeded out and one one positive thing about that is that there are a lot of people our age in our mid 20s to the 30s who um who have pretty much the same ideals as we do who are starting to infiltrate the major label record companies you know they're they're starting to get jobs there they're they're getting jobs at mtv they're getting jobs in all those companies and and at labels so 
eventually the old people will 